Uber Eats has made some changes throughout the years. Some good, some arguably bad. And while I do like delivering for Uber Eats, we're going to talk about five things that Uber Eats can do to make the experience better for us drivers. So without further ado, let's get into it. Sup everyone, this is Elijah with the Rideshare Guy, and in this video, we're going to be sharing five things that Uber can do to improve the Uber Eats experience for Uber Eats drivers. These five things will benefit us regardless if it's in the old system of doing things or the new system that they've rolled out in select markets. And stick around to the end of the video because the fifth reason, it's going to be like a, you're going to really like it. So without further ado, let's get into it. First up is full transparency. So whether you're operating on the old model or the new model, Uber still is withholding information. So under the old model, can't see the customer drop-off location or uh, what restaurant you're going to. And under the new model, which has been implemented in, implemented in certain markets, you cannot see how much you're making per mile or the per minute rate. It's hidden under trip supplementation and base fare. Now, that's 2019 going into uh, 2020 or 2020. And I think that's just a little inappropriate based on uh, what their competition is doing. All the information really needs to be on the plate so we know what we're getting into before we accept trips and also what that rate is because any circumstance where the rate isn't revealed, that's you know never good for drivers. So full transparency, uh, I say is very critical in 2019. Some people may disagree, but if you disagree, that's what the comment section is for. You know, feel free to let us know. Number two is kind of an extension of number one, and it is to show the full amount that you're going to earn before you take the trip. Now, in the new model of things, which has been implemented in certain markets, you can actually see what Uber pays, but that's not the full amount. If the customer tipped, you won't know that until an hour later, so you see that you're making $4 or something, and that could be the final amount, or it could not be. We, they should take the guesswork out of it just by showing the uh, full amount. That way you can see what the order pays in its entirety. So you can really decide if you want to take the order or not. You know, once again, I am comparing Uber to their competition and many of these other apps are doing it. So it's about time that Uber implements that because it's information we need to know. And if your competitors are doing it, it's just a matter of time. So I say the faster, the better. Number three, dispatch the ping that calls for a driver at least 10 minutes after the order is actually gone through. You might be wondering, what the heck are you talking about? I'm strictly talking about the uh, restaurants. So when the order comes in and a restaurant accepts it, a ping is automatically dispatched to go ahead and uh, call for a driver. And, you know, the driver accepts it, then they get to the restaurant. Well, that ping isn't always placed like later in the order process. Sometimes it's literally dispatched when they get the order. I got confirmation with this because it happened to me one time and the restaurant staff literally told me hey, it's going to be a while because we just got the ping two minutes ago. What? <laughs> so there's certain things that can be remedied in that situation. Just Uber, please fix it so that the ping gets dispatched at the minimum 10, 15 or 20 minutes after the order has been accepted by the restaurant. That way, drivers don't have to wait as long or they don't end up canceling. And there's a less likelihood that the food is going to be sitting there for an extended period of time because the driver can't be found. Because drivers keep coming, then canceling because the wait time is going to get too long. It's kind of inconveniencing everyone. Number four, show the customer when you have more than one order. Now, uh, some people don't know this, but Uber Eats actually shows your location to the customer when you're on the way to drop the food off. So I'm a Uber Eats customer myself. I order usually every uh, two weeks, sometimes every week. And I can see my driver coming towards, uh, you know, towards where I live. Now, something interesting happened one day. I noticed that they were going off path and then they started headed to my, to my place. So I decided I'm actually gonna ask them about it because that was the third time I had seen that happen. So when the driver arrived, as I was handing them their tip, I, uh, I asked them why were they going off path, and she told me that she had another delivery. 
So that means she had a stacked order. A stacked order is when you're on your way to the restaurant, you get another request and you take it. So you're picking up two orders. So for example, you pick up a uh, order for John and an order for Megan. And once the order is complete, once the order is done by the restaurant, then you got to drop off John's order first and then you drop off Megan's order second. Well, what if John's house is just a little out of way from Megan's apartment? Well, she kind of gets upset because she sees you going out of way and that can affect if she's going to tip you or if she just, you know, inconvenience. Like she might just take it out on the driver. Like, well, why would you do this and that? If Uber would just let her know, hey, your driver has two orders. So just be a little patient with him. She would know the situation and probably not, you know, get mad. Easy remedy. Just let the customer know your driver has two orders. Simple. And the fifth. And arguably most important, in my opinion, is when the customers place the order, if they live in an apartment, having it more or less mandatory that they give the apartment number. Now, uh, a lot of people may not know this, but Uber's technology has come a long way throughout the years, and they actually have the technology to detect if someone is in an apartment. How do I know this? Because you see the uh, shot on the screen is something that pops up on the customer app. It asks if you're in an apartment. And if you are in an apartment, like, do you want to add the apartment number? It has two options, add apartment number or ignore. Now, at first, I thought it was awesome that it's actually detecting they're in an apartment, then they can put the number in, but it has a second option called ignore. I think that needs to be taken out completely, and they need to do this. Keep that same shot. It asks, are you in an apartment? It asks, are you in an apartment? And it asks you to put it has an option to add the apartment number or the second option is just to meet your driver curbside because some people may not want to put their apartment number for privacy issues. Good for them. But the second option just needs to be meet the driver curbside. And in addition to this, I say they should not be able to proceed with the ordering of the food until the number is actually put in there. So, you know, when you're doing something online, as that little red box that appears that says required and you can't proceed with your order until you put the information in. I think that would be perfect for everyone, both Uber and the driver and especially the customers. Because how many times have you been in this situation where they don't give that information? You may text, but don't get a response. Then you call, you don't get a response. So you just kind of drive, you either driving around a quagmire trying to find them or you're just sitting there just kind of like, OK, what do I do? I don't know where this person lives. And you, you, it, the whole thing is a hassle and it can be avoided just by doing or implementing this thing that would improve Uber Eats. Like I said, in my opinion, that is the most important. But that covers five things that Uber can do to Uber Eats to improve the driver experience. So what was your favorite out of these five? Do you agree with me? Was the last one your favorite or maybe was it the first one? Do you have your own list of five things that Uber can do to improve the Uber Eats experience? Or do you disagree with any of the things that uh, I've said? We would love to hear it in the uh, comments below. And like I said, if you have your own list, put that there as well. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or shoot us an email. We make videos on a weekly basis. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. If you found value in this video, give us a like. It really helps with the uh, YouTube algorithm. That does it for this video. This is Elijah signing off. Safe and profitable driving, everyone, and have a nice day.